So if we pick up, we continue on. I did write myself a note. Um, <laughs> some of moments for this particular example problem we just worked is not zero. There's nothing keeping this constrained or keeping this static. So the sum of moments is simply, I'm just gonna add up all the moments and I do have a result moment. But the sum of moments in this problem are not zero. Now later on in the course, pretty regularly, the sum of moments will add up to be zero. And that's, so it's just kind of out of habit that I wrote it equal to zero. Is he not right now? In a little bit. All right, I wanna work another example with you guys. Um, Let's see if I can sneak it in here. It is 4.6 in the current Hibbler text. And I'm gonna draw this. I can't quite get it short of moving my camera angle, which I don't wanna do unless I just have to. Um, but I'm gonna draw this one as I go. Izzy, you're just fine. So I'm gonna start with a blank sheet. Do this one. And push this one up out of the way. And we'll just start from scratch. This is continuing L6. This is going to be page five, probably page five of six, if I had to guess. But for now, it's page five of something. All right, so um, I've got kind of a, a rough diagram here. We're basically going to draw this guy, which is, again, that's in the 14th edition, that's 4.6. Um, I've written down here, it's 4.32 from whatever edition I pulled out of, the, out of whatever text it's from. Um, the Hibbler text really hasn't changed too much. We're just going to call it a generic example for now. No, Izzy, you're just fine. So, <clears throat> what do we got here? You've got a wall, basically. We've got a wall, and there's a nail in the wall. I'm going to see if I can draw this okay here. So there's a nail in the wall. And the, the nail is put in kind of at an angle. And uh, that angle is going to be 60 degrees. Now what you've got then is you've got this crowbar that we're going to use. And this is not going to be a very good drawing at all. But this crowbar is going to kind of butt up against the wall. You're going to have a point of rotation right here that we're just going to call point A. That point A is going to be three inches from the nail. And again, this is, if you want more, if you have a, a 14th edition of the text, it's 4.6 in the 14th edition. That's the Hibbler text. Um, again, I've written 4.32, but I have no idea what edition that's from. Uh, this crowbar curls back around as a crowbar does, and there's a handle back here. So it's not a very big crowbar. And we're going to apply a vertical P straight down. This is somebody you know, basically with their hand holding, pulling this down. It's going to rotate against the wall here, point P. Um, now they've also specified that uh, from here to point A, basically to where point P is being applied is 1.5 inches. And then the length of this handle out to point A is 14 inches. It's not a real big crowbar. And the crowbar is currently making an angle with horizontal here of 20 degrees. And basically the problem is saying find P if the nail requires 125 pounds to pull out of the wall. So somebody drew, drove this nail in crooked, basically, at 60 degrees. So this nail here. And uh, drove, it, drove it in maybe crooked, and maybe we just, for whatever reason, maybe it's because it's crooked, maybe we just don't want it there. Whatever reason, we want to pull this nail out of the wall. How much force P is required to pull if it's 125 
pounds is required right there. Well, it's not going to be, it's probably not going to be 125 pounds because we've got a lever, basically. I've got a big lever, and so I've got a length here, but we're not applying all of this P perpendicular to this handle, which is what I would probably try to do, but for whatever reason, we're just pulling straight down. Maybe that's easier for the person pulling on this. Maybe it's overhead, and that's the best they can do is just pull straight down on it. Uh, so how much force is required P to do that? Well, um, this is what I would suggest. I'm going to draw this kind of a simple free body diagram. So again, point A, your point of rotation. And then, so from point A, you've got, um, you've got 125 pounds gonna be exerted by the nail right there. Now that's three inches up to the point where that is in vertically three inches up on the wall to where that force is being applied. Now that force then is gonna have a horizontal component. It's gonna be 125 pounds, and the horizontal component is opposite of the 60 degrees. So it's 125 pounds sine 60. And inevitably, somebody's still at this point in the class will be asking, hey Steve, what, why are you using sine for X? I'm not, I'm using sine for the opposite side of the 60 degrees. I don't care whether it's X or Y, it's opposite of the 60 degrees, that's why I'm using sine here. Um, <clears throat> I'm happy to continue to answer the question. If it's not clear, ask. <laughs> but it's, again, we, we talked about very early on, we, we don't use sine and cosine only for Y and X, we use sine for opposite, we use cosine for adjacent. So adjacent to that 60 degree sign uh, a 60 degree angle adjacent to the 60 degree angle i've got the part of the 125 pound force that's adjacent to well that's the cosine of 60. so that's the in this case that's the y or the vertical component because it's adjacent to the 60 degrees we're going to use cosine there and then i've got force p being applied out here now do i want to resolve this force p into um uh, X and Y components? I could, but look how the geometry is being described. I know 1.5 inches here, basically perpendicular to the handle, and parallel to the handle, I have 14 inches. So if I describe this as X and Y, then I'm also gonna to have to describe these two distances in X and Y. But what I can do is I can describe this as the component that is perpendicular to the handle and the component that is parallel to the handle. Now this is not how I would normally do it. Normally I would just go ahead and resolve these in X and Y, but again, that would require me to resolve these in X and Y as well, which is not, not impossible, it's not too hard to do. Um, but that's, in this case, it's not what I'm gonna do here. So now how do I determine which or which, right? What, what angles do I use here? Well, it, this is what I like to do when I, when I work this problem, kind of over to the side. Um, if I've got P, let's kind of maybe simplify this out over here to the side. If I've got P and P is 20 degrees, um, the handle is 20 degrees from horizontal. Well, what I can do is I can say, well, the, the part of force P that is parallel to the handle, right, along this handle, well, if it's 20 degrees from vertical, and I'm saying P is, I'm sorry, 20 degrees from horizontal, and P is vertical, that means this angle here is 70 degrees. And so I can say that this is either, um, and if this is 70 degrees, and, and this is my component perpendicular to the handle, then that means this is 20 degrees down here. Right, and another way you can kind of think about that is if the handle is 20 degrees from horizontal, then perpendicular to that handle is gonna be 20 degrees from vertical. And that's kind of the way I, I would think about that. So if, if this is P, if my hypotenuse in this case is P, because this is my right angle. If my hypotenuse is P, then this would be P 
sine 20 along the handle, and this would be P either cosine 70 or, I'm sorry, sine 70 or cosine 20 is perpendicular to the handle. <clears throat> I know that's a bit, I'm, I'm hoping this helps, right? Um, I know it's a bit of a stretch, and, and again, seriously, if you want to just draw P, resolve P into its X and Y components, and then resolve these distances into our X and Y components, that's perfectly fine. There's nothing wrong with that. But if you're okay with this parallel perpendicular um, components, then that's how we would break that out. So this would be P sine 20 degrees, and this is P cosine 20 degrees, or P sine 70 if you prefer. And those are distances from point A of 1.5 inches here for the sine 20 and uh, 14 for P cosine 20. And then what I can do is I can say, well, if I take my sum of moments about A, right? And here's the thing. I want to find P, what is the minimum P to pull this nail out of the wall if it requires 125 pounds to just get it started pulling out of the wall? How much do I actually need? Well, I would get right to the point where I start to break it loose. And that would be where if I applied just enough P on this thing to get this nail out of the wall on the other end, that's when I have essentially a sum of moments is equal to zero. If I apply more P than that, then it's going to be easier to pull this 125 pound nail out. But if I apply just enough to get it loose, that means I'm applying just enough P to where I'm getting sum of moments is equal to zero. Right, so if I do that then, okay, well, um, if I've got, let's add up the forces times their distances. So I'm adding up about point A, that's where it's going to rotate. Notice this 125 pounds cosine 60 passes through point A. There's no moment for this guy. But I do have moments caused by the other three forces. So this force here, its perpendicular distance to point A is 3 inches. It is causing a, if I push my finger in this direction, notice that is causing a clockwise rotation. So it's a clockwise rotation caused by this force there. So that is minus 125 pounds times the sine of 60 degrees. And that is, again, acting a distance of three inches from point A. Now, because I've drawn my hopefully helpful diagram over here, I don't have enough room to write other terms. So I'm going to have to write those other terms down here. I maybe should have just started my equation down here so I have enough room, but it's okay. Sometimes you'll need to write multiple terms. You'll have a long equation. You need to write the equation on multiple lines. That's what we're going to do here. So um, this is the first term. Let's add, let's add other terms. Okay, so if I put my pin right there on point A, I need to figure out the sign of this force. So if I push my paper in the direction of that force. Notice I'm getting a counterclockwise rotation. I didn't mean to draw on that, but it's okay. So I'm getting a counterclockwise rotation from this force. So that's going to be plus P sine 20 degrees. And that is acting, It's if you extend its line of action out, notice that it is acting 1.5 inches. from the point of rotation, point A. And then if I do that again here, if I put my pen on point A, this time I'll retract the point, and I try to push in the direction of this P cosine 20, notice I'm getting a counterclockwise rotation when I do that. So that one's also going to be causing a positive moment. That's plus P cosine 20 degrees, and this one's causing or, I'm sorry, this one has a lever arm or a moment arm of 14 inches. So three terms in this equation, they're going to sum to be zero. Again, this will tell me what is the minimum P required. If I have any more P than that, it's going to be easier to pull this nail out. So this is the minimum P required. And now it's just math, right? Now we're just going to solve. I'll let you pause and go ahead and do your algebra there and then come back. Okay, you got it. I've written down here in my notes that P is equal to 23.8 pounds. Right? And I think you can kind of see some algebra there. If I factor 
the P out here, I'm going to have, if I move this negative over to the other side of the equation, I factor the P out of these two terms. So I'm going to have 125 pounds times the sine of 60 degrees. That's at a lever arm of 3 inches or a moment arm of 3 inches. That gets divided by then, again, I'm going to factor the P out of these two terms. And then uh, this guy moves over to the zero side of the equation. And then I'm going to get divided by the sum of those two quantities there. So the sum of sine 20 degrees times 1.5 inches and also the cosine of 20 degrees applied at 14 inches. So that sum is going to be my entire denominator. If you look at units here, I've got inches in both of these. I've got inches on top, so I've got inches over inches. The inches go away. The cosines and sines have no uh, uh, units. The only units left are the pounds. So I should end up with, when I do this, if I watch my order of operations, I should end up with 23.8 pounds. At least that's what I have written down here. All right, guys, that's as far as we really need to go for exam one, um, at least for the summer of 24 when these videos are being posted. Uh, another semester, maybe exam one, we, we do differently, so check your course listing, or if you're not in my class, you know, figure out from your instructor where you're going to go ex exam one, but um, we'll go from there. I'll look for post announcements as to what we're going to do for exam and how we're going to review. There we go.